Welcome back everyone, I'm Dana the Dinosaur Drawer and today I'm going to be showing you all how to draw a Carcharodontosaurus. So here is our reference image. And yeah, the equipment we're going to be using today is a Graph Gear 500 mechanical pencil, but any pencil will work fine. Um, we're going to be using an eraser and obviously some paper, so get out your equipment and we will dive right in. So this is like a screenshot from a video and it's not exactly clear if this is a Maposaurus or a Carcharodontosaurus, but it looks pretty much like a Carcharodontosaurus. So I'm going to be using it as our reference image and it's going to be standing on top of a dead or dying um, sauropod dinosaur, which might be an Argentinosaurus, or it could be like a, um, maybe a giraffe titan, or a sauropod, Poseidon, whatever the, I know there's one in North Africa where Carcharodontosaurus was, some big sauropod that it probably hunted, so that's what, that's what, um, the Carcharodontosaurus is going to be standing on top of. So the first thing we're going to do is put a line right about here. Not exactly the middle of your paper, more near the, the, lower end of your paper. But yeah, that's going to represent where the ground is going to be. So we're drawing two dinosaurs. The Carcharodontosaurus is obviously going to be the main focus. So we're going to have the head of the Carcharodontosaurus up here. So draw lightly in the outline stage. And don't worry if it's sloppy because we will trim things up later. So the head's going to be right about there. It's got a long neck. The body's going to be at a three quarters angle. We're going to have the front arms here. We have one back leg, one back leg. We'll put a little circle there for the knees. And this, um, actually the knee will be higher on this one. So put the knee up there because the foot is going to be resting on the body of the poor baby sauropod that has fallen into the hands of the Carcharodontosaurus. So we're going to have its head tilting back. So it's obviously still alive, but definitely doomed. So this one won't be too hard to draw, it's going to be on its side. Then we're going to see a little bit of the tail of our Carcharodontosaurus poking out to the side there. So that is pretty much our rough outline. I know it's very, very rough this time, but it, it's going to work. So let's move on to the next stage. So the first thing we're going to be detailing is the head, so let's focus on that. So Carcharodontosaurus has a very long head, it's probably one of the longest carnivore dinosaur heads ever, like it's right up there with Giganotosaurus and Spinosaurus, but definitely bigger than the head of a T-Rex. And yes, it's quite slanted down, it's much more narrower at the end than the jaws of a T-Rex would be. So a definitely, definitely a different dinosaur we're talking about here. So right away I want to put these like spiky bumps that are all over the ridge here. These are going to be all above the eye. So yeah, we're technically drawing an accurate dinosaur today. Because <laughs> this is, um, yeah, as I said, a screenshot from like a video documentary of some sort. I think I might have seen it a few years ago, but I have not seen it recently, so can't give you much details. So the eye is going to be right about here. It's looking off into the sunset or whatever. <laughs> might be looking at another Carcharodontosaurus that's thinking about stealing its kill. Or it could just be roaring in triumph. I challenge you guys to be creative. Like you can add whatever you want in the background. You could add palm trees, more, more sauropod dinosaurs, maybe another Carcharodontosaurus, whatever you like. So right now we're putting in those ridges around the eye socket here. And I've been getting a lot of comments lately. Oh, I always get comments about shrink wrapping my dinosaurs. But I'm simply copying today the reference image that I got. And when you don't shrink wrap them, there's very little to do, you know? It's like shrink wrapping them makes them look much more detailed in my mind. Okay, we got the main cavity right here. I do have a shading pencil with me today. 
that I might use occasionally. And I'd recommend at this point to like turn your pencil a little bit more to the side so you can cover a you can so you can cover more ground, you know, more quickly. And it's unclear exactly where the nostril is, but I'm gonna guess it's gonna be right up here near the front of the snout. Now coming out of the edge here, it's gonna be all these lines that are coming up. These little indentations. So I'm actually thinking I might make the jaw a little bit narrower back here. I've decided to do more um, videos nowadays, especially since we're all in shutdown or lockdown because of the coronavirus. So I'm like, this is the best time to make YouTube videos. But even with all that, it was um, I had to make some time today to make this drawing. It's weird, even in shutdown or yeah, lockdown, you can find yourself very busy. Like me personally, I don't mind it too much. I know other people don't, but when you have your family there with you, it's not as bad. Okay. So we're finishing up with the top jaw here. Maybe put some more scales in the back here of the head. I'll sprinkle a few little scales here and there. So I'm not sure if you guys have seen my art show video. But if you haven't checked that out, I'd recommend it. I did speak a little fast, I know. <laughs> I was under, not pressure, but I was just a little nervous. I mean, who wouldn't be? And I'm not, like, a good speaker. Okay, so the head is pretty much done. I'm going to... I don't have any other erasers. Actually, I do. Off my other mechanical pencil. Just to clean up this edge a tiny bit. And we are not completely done until we put the teeth in. So let's go ahead and do that. So, as you all know, because I know you guys are a bunch of dinosaur fans. Uh, Carcodon's source means shark tooth lizard because the teeth looked sort of like a, sort of like shark teeth to the first people who discovered it. So I hope I've educated some people today by giving you that little fact. So now we're gonna be working on the bottom jaw, which is quite thin. So I think most scientists would agree that Carcharodontosaurus had a weaker bite than the bite of T-Rex. And T-Rex probably has the strongest bite of any Dinosaur. I'm pretty sure, yeah. That's why I get really annoyed by Jurassic Park 3 when the Spinosaurus just snaps the neck of the T-Rex. I hate that movie. No, just kidding. It's got some good parts. Jurassic Park 3, but it's obviously, like, of all the Jurassic movies, that's my least favorite one. So right now we're gonna have some, like, saliva dripping from the jaw, which I guess was just opened. I'm gonna put some shading in here for this muscle that opens and snaps the jaw closed. And again, we're gonna have these lines, these little indentations. So if there are, if there are any Gignotosaurus fans out there or Carcodontosaurus fans, Please let me know if you think that, that those dinosaurs would be able to beat T-Rex in a fight. I know it's kind of a childish question, <laughs> question, but um, yeah, I'm always interested to see what people say about that. Because I'm always, I've always been a T-Rex fan, probably will always be one until I die. But um, yeah, I know there are some fans of Carcharodontosaurus and of Gignotosaurus, and there are a ton of Spinosaurus fans, so I already know that. <laughs> I know a lot of you guys think Spinosaurus would beat T-Rex in a fight. I think it just depends on which one is like meaner. Because I don't know why I have this like image in my head, but I always feel like I would be more afraid of a tiger than a lion. I feel like I could walk past a group of lions that are sitting under a tree 
and they wouldn't act, like naturally attack me. But I feel like if there was a tiger behind a tree or under a tree and it saw me, it might like run after me and <laughs> tackle me and take me down. So maybe maybe one of the two dinosaurs was more more vicious. Okay, we're done with the head. That took a while, longer than I expected. But now we can move on to the neck, which will be easy peasy. The neck you could pretty much draw with your eyes closed. <laughs> Starts off wide like a lizard's neck, and then it gets a little thinner here. The chest is going to be right about there. I don't want to make it too thin. Because all of you who love chicken, or all of those of you who love Carcardonsaurus will leave some hate comments <laughs> if I make Carcardonsaurus look too weak. Okay, let's see. I might switch to another pencil. So the first thing we're going to do is put in this vein. It's got a very thick vein. Just like coming from yeah, I assume this is bringing blood back from the head to the heart. I think arteries are the ones you can't see. Those are the ones inside, like deep in the mu under the muscle and stuff. And the veins are the vessels that bring blood back to the heart. So I'm going to make this a little darker so it's separated from the darkness of the bottom jaw. So in this um, time of quarantine, I was thinking to maybe redo some of my old tutorials, especially the more popular ones, like the Mosasaurus jumping out of the water and eating the shark. So please comment below if you'd be interested in that. It's just an idea I had. I might put up a poll sometime to get you guys' thoughts on that. It's really about what you guys want, so leave your thoughts in the comment be comments below. And even though I don't respond to all of them, if I've, if I've li left you a heart, it definitely means I've seen it. I mean, I see most of them. I just don't reply to all of them because it, it would take too much time. But I reply to the especially nice ones. <laughs> and if you request something, I usually add it to my list even though I don't always reply. So this was on the list. I forget. Forgive me whoever requested this. I just, I've just forgotten uh, your username. But in the future, I will try and give a shout out to the people who requested stuff once I draw it. So as you can see, we're doing like some more of those indentations, like these wrinkles in the neck. And we'll shade each one a bit. Whenever like another YouTuber responds to my comments, I always get super excited and usually save the email or take a screenshot of it, so. I know how a lot of people feel when I reply to their emails, even though I'm, or reply to their comments, even though I'm a relatively small YouTuber. So I do try and reply to, you know, most comments. Especially when they're early, like, if you a comment on a video that I made last year, then, yeah, chances are I won't respond to those comments. Okay, now that we've got the neck all shaded up, I think we can move a little lower and do the chest area, the chest, shoulders, and arms. So the shoulders are going to be right about here. It's going to have large shoulders because it's got bigger arms than, than other uh, sauropods, or <laughs> theropods, sorry. Let's make some like roundish lines to show the shape of the shoulder, show the roundness. Just gonna have a short arm here, short bicep and tricep. Just gonna have a longer forearm. It's gonna have its three fingers. And I always like to color in the claws 
But you can leave them white if you like. I think they look a little cooler that way, but yeah. And now I'm going to add little scales on top of each finger. Alright, let me get out my shading pencil again. I'm just going to shade the edges here. Let's shade the forearm. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now the second arm is going to actually be partly hidden by the first arm. And maybe I'll actually change this because, uh, yeah, I think I might change the position of this arm. So we can actually see the whole thing and have it slightly bent upward. So the arms of theropod dinosaurs are very similar to human arms. So if you can master a human arm, you can definitely master dinosaur arms. And one, one thing I usually like to do is have like the middle finger be the longest in this case, I didn't do that, but usually I have the middle finger be the longest and then the the highest finger on the hand be the shortest. So that's going to be sort of like the thumb. And then the other finger will be the medium-sized finger. So I did this hand a little bit more accurately than that one. So guys, I have a vlog channel, which you've all heard about. I think most of you have heard about it. Um, but yeah, I have a link to it in the description below in case you guys are interested in my adventures. The channel is called Danny Adventure Vlogs. Just got some random adventures on there. I do um, film some workouts and just fun times with friends. And those might brighten your day. You are in your home trying to wait out this coronavirus. So I don't know. If you guys would like to, go check that out. Then come back and your hand will be rusted from drawing by then. Don't worry, you don't have to do that. I, I get really annoyed at when YouTubers say, Oh, dro drop the like button right now. Give a like for whatever, this kid who said something clever. I don't know. I don't, like, that almost makes me not want to leave a like when people tell me to. I usually leave a like when I actually like the video and want to do it out of my own impulse. But I hate being told by YouTubers what to do. Like, if you ever see any of the... Oh, by the way, I'm just adding another vein right now. If you ever watch the YouTube videos of any of those big YouTubers, they almost always ask you to subscribe if you're new and blah, 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 blah. I usually say at the end of the video, because most of the people don't, like, watch until the end of the video. But just, like, a reminder for those of you who are new. Yeah, I avoid trying to, like, shouting out subscribe in every single of my vlog videos. <laughs> Cause I figure if I get annoyed at it, some other people might also be annoyed by the constant reminder to subscribe to every channel. Okay, so we're working on the lower belly right now. Just making these curved lines. We have many of them to make it look shaded. Let me bring in the shading pencil. So right now I'm just using one chain pencil, it's a 4B, in case you guys are wondering. Uh, Jignos, or not Jignosaurus, sorry, Carcharodontosaurus was more on the slender side, it had like a long body. It's got like a high arching spine. And the, the spine of Jignosaurus is even higher arching. But yeah, the two were most definitely cousins. I remember seeing like a documentary about them. And I'm pretty sure at some point um, Africa and South America were connected. This is what I saw in the documentary. 
and once they split apart, like because they obviously did, they look like they fit together. But yeah, once Africa and uh, South America split apart, there were probably like a, uh, some type of dinosaur that was sort of yeah, like a like the ancestor of both these dinosaurs was there at that time. And then when they got separated, they um, sort of not not exactly evolved, but adapted to their environment and changed differently. Because I'm not like a believer in evolution, just so you guys know, but I do believe in um, microevolution and minor adaptations and changes in animals, because that is fact. But we've never actually seen one animal change <clears throat> from one thing into another thing, so. Just so you guys know that. But yes, rabbits can change their fur if they move to a snow environment and things like that. Okay, so we're working right now on the shoulder blade, which is going to be sticking out a bit there. I know it's trink wrapped, but hey, it looks cool. I'm going to add a little bit more shading here to the bottom of the belly. Maybe I'll smudge A little bit of smudging and of course add scales if you guys have time on your hands so yeah just a little bunch of little scales will really make the dinosaur drawing pop more that's what people always ask me like when they see that my dinosaur drawings they're like well how long did that take you and i'll say it took me a long time and they're like yeah all those little scales look like they take a really long time but sometimes if you get good at it you can just like a pencil around like that and just make a zillion little scales. <laughs> alright, alrighty, so let's move on to the legs. I think we'll start off with this one, which is going to be the one resting on our poor friend on the ground over there, right here. So dinosaur legs and legs in general have always been a struggle of mine, so let's see how this turns out. I'm going to have the knee right about here, so put a bunch of wrinkles in. I have this huge thigh, because it has to be huge to carry the enormous weight of Carcharodontosaurus. I'm going to have the calf. So I'm actually moving the leg over a bit from where I originally intended to put it. That is totally okay, since we drew so lightly with our pencil. It's not going to be a big deal. Now we're going to have the enormous foot of Carcharodontosaurus. And I'm going to make an executive decision and just move the ground a little lower. Like so. Yeah, yeah I, I give you guys liberty to leave this video a thumbs down. <laughs> this leg looks kind of off, but hopefully this adjustment with the foot will make up for it. Slightly, because it still looks kind of bad. Okay, so let's add in the tail, which will be sticking out there. I mean, the rest of it, like, from here on, it looks pretty good, but this foot and leg does not look very good. I just need to start drawing more. Especially more dinosaur legs and stuff. So maybe I'll do a live stream. I should make a note to myself to do a live stream. Some point. Or maybe not a live stream, just a video. Where we will be drawing tons and tons of dinosaur legs and feet from different angles. I think Beanie Draws did one of those. I, I watched it and it was pretty good. So I, I think I needed to make one of those. I'm just writing myself a note right now. Okay, so now the easy part. 
we got the easy chill part. This is where we're going to be putting in the sauropod. pod. So the sauropod's pod's backbone is going to be right about here. It's going to slump down a bit where the tail will begin. And the leg will be right about here. The back legs, and then it's going to have its front legs down here. We're just going to really be able to see the hips and shoulders because the legs are probably collapsed on the other side. And here, the neck of this poor victim has been pretty much squashed into the ground there. So I, I apologize to all of you who love the plant eating dinosaurs. And I've always been like fascinated by the carn carnivorous dinosaurs. Like I think most people are, but sometimes I like the the herb herb herbivorous dinosaurs out there. Just put like a sad face on this poor dinosaurs. <laughs> oh man, it looks so cute. The poor thing. So I think the nose will be right about here. Oh, uh, yeah, I made two nostrils there. It does have two nostrils, but one on each side. Put the nose right out there. But this is somewhat realistic, because I don't think a Carcharodontosaurus would try and go after a full-grown sauropod. So it's probably going to go after a weak and sick and young dinosaurs. And I think that's what lions do today, most predators in general. Like Komodo dragons, they will go after the weakest creature they can find. Because predators are usually, I don't know, they're not weaker, but most of the time they're smaller than the prey they're going after. Okay, so I've added a bunch of shading there. Now we're going to have some bumps here for the vertebrae. And then we're going to add some more shading. Okay, so our drawing is coming to an end. It's looking pretty good. I mean, it's a little bit on the sloppy side. I will say this is not the quality I'm always looking for. But it's a decent sketch. Okay, yeah, but, um, I'm relatively satisfied, as I like to say. And now I'm going to sign in the corner right here.